Hi, this is Grant from WoodshopDude.com. Today I'd like to take this opportunity to show you a sawhorse design that I came up with a couple years ago to solve a lot of problems that I've been having with either the plastic sawhorses or the bulky I-beam sawhorses that are pretty common out there today. Um, here's the things I was looking to solve. I want something lightweight. I want something that I can adjust easily. I want it to be collapsible so it doesn't take a bunch of room up in my shop. And also, I want to be able to have different attachments uh, to meet my needs whenever I, I have them. So what I came up with is what I, what I call the shop dog, which I have two hanging beside me right here. Um, they hang on the wall using a cleat that I made from the little bit of excess that's left over from the two 2x4s two that you used to make these. They mount on the wall using a French cleat. And as soon as I pull them down, they'll stand by themselves even in the folded up position. So you can just place them against the wall if you don't want to even hang them. Another great feature that came accidentally was when, I, when you lift the shop dog, it swings up away from your body. So when you're carrying them, you don't have to worry about busting your shins on the shop dogs, on the saw horses. Also, when you're entering a 30 inch door or a 36 inch door, you have room to go into the building without worrying about damaging all the millwork. So that was kind of a, a fluke that happened. Setting them up is really easy as well. This tensioning strap holds the shop dog together and also holds the top cross support. This cross support can be changed out when you guys cut into it over and over again or maybe you want to add a six or eight foot cross support for wider work. Simply spread the legs apart, place the cross support in there. Using the tensioning strap that's available on my website, you tension the shop dogs together, and now they're complete. That's all there is to it. You'll notice that it is the legs are cambered in two directions, so it makes them a lot stable or a lot more stable for rocking back and forth. Like I said before, you can add a bunch of different attachments. Let me go ahead and set this one up as well. So we have two set up in a very short period of time. If I grab the top cross support, again, carrying them as a symbol, they go against your body, so nothing's in your way moving these things around. So also up on the wall, you'll see that I have some attachments that I created. Um, a lot of times when you're working with pipe, such as this over here, That pipe be rolling around for you while you're trying to clamp it or work on it to cut it. So solve that problem. For about two dollars and fifty cents worth of material. And do a quick change. And put on these cross supports. You have V-notches in there. Um, that's cut either on micro saw or table saw. They go right into the shop dog. And we're ready to cut any sort of pipe. Works great for pipe or pipe clamps. Okay, so you can make a working surface uh, to meet your needs. Now the pipes aren't going to roll around on you. Some other attachments that we have up here. If you're doing any finish work, and you want to protect your surface. I made a couple of these um, supports. They're just simple 1x8s that I covered with carpet and I attached a 2x4 to the bottom of them. Again, they fit right onto the shop.
up, dogs. You can tighten them down. And you're ready to go. Nice wide, flat surface. Again, all your finishing products are going to get damaged. I have a couple other attachments that I came up with. Again, I'm sure that you guys can figure out some attachments that will work for you. Um, I have some large bar clamps that I try to clamp with when I'm doing some panel clamping. That have a tendency that the clamps roll around, they flip over right when you're going to clamp up your project, and they get a little frustrated and work with. So with these supports, I've cut some dados in them, and by using our large clamps, I can place them in the shop dog, have them situated so that the clamps are above the shop dog support, and I can clamp up my project however wide or long it is that I have. Um, all the glue will fall to the ground, but not onto my nice workbench, and they stay in support and they don't tip over on us. Again, with the pipe clamp attachment, I can use bark or pipe clamps. I have some of these long bar clamps that are able to be used um, with this attachment. Again, about $2.50 for the attachment. Another great attachment that you can use a shop dog for is going to be for your miter saw. Um, many times you buy a miter saw stand from a big box store and they're real expensive and then they're only used for holding a miter saw. So if you have a shop dog on site, you're able to transform that into a, a miter saw stand pretty effortlessly. Let me demonstrate. First of all, I'm going to remove the top support. Go to your pile of 2x material, it could be a 2x4x12, a 2x4x8, whatever your needs are. I have a 2x4x8 right here. I go ahead and place it in the shop dog, crank it up so it's nice and tight. The ends of these are going to be used to hold the supports that I made out of some scrap 1x4s. But let's go ahead and put the miter saw on first. By mounting your miter saw on a piece of plywood and putting in some um, putting in some little pieces on the bottom of one by, you're able to transform this shop dog now into a miter saw stand. It's secured. I made some braces or some wing supports using some simple 1x4 material. Cut the height of your miter saw so that the 1x4 material is to the base of your miter saw. Now, you can use this and move your cross supports anywhere you need to in order to use your miter saw effectively. It's a great option. Again, you don't have to buy a specific stand to use it for your miter saw. Alright, when you're done with your shop dogs, we're going to go ahead and put them back on the wall. Really simple to do. We're going to loosen the tensioning strap. We're going to take the legs apart a little bit. Remove the center support. They sit right on the bottom center support, or cross support. You slide your legs together. The strap goes over top to lock them all into place. Tighten them up, and then place them black onto the cleat. And that's it. And we're done. They're ready to go again next time you need them. Thanks, and visit us at woodshopdude.com.